A sign I use to identify a great television show is consistency throughout a series. I've read about one. You haven't. Sure, you can use character arcs, plots, or technical achievements to establish this, but I think for most of us, it's a killer getting into a show and hitting a roadblock in storytelling. Leverage is one of the few shows where any episode you pick, you'll be entertained. Sure, you'll find better storytelling out there, high quality performances from other actors, or maybe a better technical achievement. However, on the basis of entertainment, Leverage does an excellent job of being consistent. So, for this video, Video, I'm going to go over a few of my favorite episodes, some of my least favorite, rank the seasons, and address a few things I'd like to see in the Leverage revival. Wait, I'm forgetting something. Oh, wait, that's right. As usual, your support means so much to me. A good portion of you watching are unfortunately not subscribed. What are you waiting for, huh? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Please consider subscribing, turn on the notification bell, and support my dream and the channel. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back to leverage. One of my first favorite episodes is the season four episode, The Van Gogh Job. The episode was directed by John Rogers and written by Chris Downey, both of which helped create the series. In the episode, the team is paired up with a client, Charlie Lawson, an African-American World War II vet who found the famous painting in France. The episode is a recount on how Charlie came to find the painting and where he hid it. Throughout the series, Leverage does several themed episodes. The Van Gogh Job bounces between the present and that familiar Saving Private Ryan atmosphere of World War II. Charlie Charlie, played by the famous Danny Glover, I'm too old for this shit, is a charming guy just trying to make it in the world and get the girl of his dreams. Of course, played in the 1940s, significant roadblocks keep him from having the woman of his dreams, Dorothy, played in the 40s by Parker actress Beth Risegraff. <laughs> Wait, hold on, stop a second. It was brought to my attention that I mispronounced her name wrong and that my credibility was in question. Miss Reesgraf, I apologize for pronouncing your name wrong. I'm clearly a lowly YouTuber with the reading comprehension of a six-year-old. You suck! Yeah, jackass. Okay, are you guys happy now? I admitted I was wrong. Let's just get back to the damn video. The Van Gogh job, unlike most of the episodes, doesn't really involve a con, a complicated setup, or somebody getting tricked. It's telling a clever, emotional story of love and two people who, while loving each other deeply, cannot be together due to society's disgusting norms. The cast is absolutely phenomenal here, including Aldous Hodge, who plays a Charlie in the 40s. Glover and Hodge together mold this character to be someone we can absolutely sympathize with in a 40 minute runtime. And this is a testament to the tight romantic writing by Chris Downey. It's one of the more bittersweet episodes in the series, but damn, it's good. The Last Damn Job is another great episode in the Leverage Arsenal. The final episode of season four was also written by John Rogers and directed by showrunner Dean Devlin. In the episode, the Leverage team recruits old friends and foes to defeat the season four villain Latimer and Victor Dubinich, the very first hit from the very first episode of Leverage. The Last Damn Job feels like a clever salute to the four past seasons of Leverage. Not only do you have all the friends and foes joining the Leverage team, but you also have the very first hit emerging. This episode is an immediate follow-up to Nate Ford's father's death. The season had shown Nate as breaking point, and in this episode, it was teased quite a lot that Nate had reached that point. The point of no return. I'm not a fan of stuffing endless amount of characters into a script, especially on television. It can really weigh down a brisk 40 minutes, and you can't really capture that emotional drive or motive. Somehow, Rogers is able to pull it off, with enough screen time with every character and those core character moments we all thrive on. Each of the integrated characters and foes, like Will Wheaton or the extremely talented Clayne Crawford, all work so damn well with the core cast. Everyone has chemistry. Honestly, the show could have ended here, and I would have been okay with that. Another favorite of mine, one that doesn't hold that much weight in the series, is the season four episode, The Carnival Job. This is one of those high complex schemes where the bad guy isn't really the bad guy and there's actually another bad guy. The client invents a high-tech chip, but it's stolen by his boss. The actual con itself isn't one of the more interesting ones, but it's really the character moments throughout. But I'm coming for you, me, and I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna bring you home now. You tell me, does that sound like the truth? Yeah. I always found Elliot's arc through the series to be one of the more interesting elements in the show. 
Throughout this series, it's teased that Elliot did atrocious things, so to see him go all out for a child to save them was really heroic. It's one of the first times I can remember Elliot semi-losing. I also really like this moment where Nate faces off against the nanny, who, surprise, is actually a Russian bad guy. Oh, well, shocker. This whole moment with him was really cool. I think it's also neat that Frank Oz, yes, the guy that voices Yoda, also directed this episode. He did bring D.B. Cooper to justice. <laughs> Now, you're suffering under an enormous weight. We provide... leverage. I have lost my only son. Do you really think you scare me? Uh, that, that, that right there, that's a lie. I, I love foreplay. So, for my least favorite episode, I'd probably pick the season 5 episode, The White Rabbit Job. God. Wait, what is The White Come Rabbit? On. It's the ungriptable grip. It's impossible. Yeah, but we do impossible. No, Parker, not like this. For this, you have to get inside the mark, like inside their head. This episode involves a young industrialist who is basically closing down shop and destroying a company his family built. So, the team decides to do the impossible White Rabbit con, which includes putting a mark through a series of simulated dreams to make them believe something. If this sounds familiar, Familiar, well, that's because Christopher Nolan is probably lining up his lawyers. The episode plays like a not-so-subtle, not-so-clever spoof of Inception. Once again, Leverage was keen on doing elaborate cons, but this one really lost me from Inception. Hey guys, guys, you, that was a good one, right? Come on. High five? No? Okay. That's not to say this episode didn't have great scenes, such as the rooftop scene between Parker and Alex, the client. I'm alone. I don't understand. I had somebody. I lost someone once, okay, and I thought I was alone too, but you know what, I wasn't. It just felt so damn ridiculous, so hard to believe that it left me a bit emotionally unavailable throughout. I know a lot of Christian Kane slash Elliot fans will hate me for this, but I also really cannot stand this moment at all. I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. As for the season rankings, I'd probably go season 4. Season 3, Season 1, Season 2, and Season 5. The biggest issue I had with the last season is the cast being separated. Sure, they've done plenty of episodes with characters being spread around, doing various tasks in the con. They were still in the episode, though. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if it had to do with timing, perhaps production issues, or cast having various conflicts, but some of the cast didn't appear in several episodes. Majority of the season didn't really feel like a finale. Not like it did in Season 4. Also, Elliot's hair changes quite a few times and that also bugged me. As for the upcoming revival, the cast will almost be cut in half. Timothy Hutton will not be returning and Aldous Hodge has been relegated to a reoccurring role due to scheduling conflicts. The attachment I grew to the show was with the characters. <laughs> Miss Pearson. Hi. Hi, Chip. No, it's not my name. <laughs> I was very, very wondering if you could, with my dingling. <laughs> Not the elaborate cons or the plot. So removing Nate's interaction with the team is detrimental. Removing Hodge's comedic timing and his high energy will also be detrimental. So Devlin will have his hands full in trying to recreate that similar energy. Thankfully, the returning characters of Parker, Sophie, and Elliot will still be at the top of their game. Noah Wiley has had a lot of success working with Devlin, and I'm sure will be solid in the series. Hopefully Devlin does his best to explain these absences, and I think some of the show's success will depend on the success of explaining this. I also would be up for returning characters like Jerry Ryan, or even some villains that the team had scammed in the prior episodes. So it's up to you guys. What do you guys want to see in the revival? Also, what are some of your favorite episodes in the series? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you tots on the next video.